Hello and welcome to this 8 tutorial on 885 programming and the topic of today's program counter. So we have seen a lot of registers A, B, C, D, E, H, L here and the flag registers are also seen by us in previous video tutorials. We have seen memory and uh, we have not explored these three registers. So out of these three registers in this tutorial we will be seeing what is this PC register or program counter registers. So the program counter is nothing but it is a register which keeps the which keeps the address of next instruction to be executed inside a program. So let us first execute this program step by step. I have written a simple program here and let us first execute it step by step. We already know the meaning of this program through MVI B, we are moving this 0a into b register move a comma b will transfer or copy the contents of b into a inr a will increment this a register and hlt will hold the computer so this is a simple enough program and we will execute it step by step by pressing f5 so the moment we press f5 we see a blue line here and in at this instant only this program counter should show us the address of the location wherever program is stored so I think that this is a bug in this program GNU 885 simulator that it does not show you the first address but it should actually show you the program in this simulator is stored from the location 4200H. So it should show here 42 and it should show here 00 but it is a bug in this program that for the first step it does not show anything and it is known that this instruction takes two bytes which we will explore uh, shortly that why it takes two bytes so it this instruction takes two bytes so after this the next location that is move a comma b should be 4202h so when we will press f5 again the program counter will start displaying it that is 4202 so it's a bug here that it does not show the first location but from the second location and onwards it will show it correctly if you will press f5 again it will again display the same location it will again display the next location 4203 since this instruction is of one byte which we will see why it is one byte in short while so this instruction is a one byte instruction so it is now showing 4203 as the uh, as the address of next instruction to be executed and similarly if we will press f5 again we will reach halt now to see the content of 4200 in hexadecimal at that particular memory location the program is written so I will move on to that location. So for that what I have done is first of all I have taken the equivalent of 4202 and I have converted it to decimal and it comes out to be 16898 and since I know that program started from 4200 so on the safe side instead of 16898 I will be taking 16890 in this start tab and hit enter or ok. So you can see that at location 4200 and till location 4204 these digits are written these digits are nothing but they are the decimal representation of our program inside a computer this program will be stored as ones or zeros because computer is a binary device so that is why everything will be stored in the form of strings of ones and zeros so the decimal representation of those numbers is shown here some simulators will show it in hexadecimal some will show it in decimal as in our case and some will show it in binary but binary is very less useful because we cannot interpret much by seeing the strings of ones and zeros so this is the representation of that now to see what these numbers are you first need to download a file and that file is kept at this particular address and this is one of my blogs which is called as reference 8085.blogspot.in if you will type this in your web browser and uh, you will see there a link reference for 8085 even if you don't see this link you can just see in this blog archive you just go to 2016 and March there will be one post only or there might be multiple posts if I will post some content in future so you just go to this March month and see reference for 885 click on that so this link will appear and you just click this link so it will download a file you either keep that file on your computer or if you are using some browser uh, which can automatically open that so it will automatically open that so this is the file this is how the file looks like and it says serial number mnemonics operand operation code or opcode in hexadecimal opcode in decimal and bytes so for example let us take this instruction add we have already used this add instruction and we know that add instruction can be used with a register b register c register d register e h l and m register so there are different variants of this add command and uh, whatever number of byte it takes in memory to be stored are written here 
So this is the number of bytes that it will be taking and the hexadecimal representation is shown in this column and the decimal representation of this instruction is shown in this column. So if 135 is written at some memory location inside a program, so the computer will interpret at it as ADD A instruction. If 128 is written, it will interpret it as ADD B instruction. So this is the interpretation of this. Now let us have a look at our program again. But before that, at the end of this list, you can see that there are total 246 entries. But that does not mean that there are 246 number of instructions in this computer 885. It simply means that there are 246 patterns. As we have seen that ADD has different variants. You can see that it can be coupled with various registers. So ADD is a single command, but it can be coupled with different registers. That is why it has different variants. So there are 246 complete combinations out of which only 74 are instructions. So 74 instructions are present in 885 microprocessor and 246 patterns can be made out of those 74 instructions. So this is about this list and now let us return to our program. So we will see what is the code for MV, opcode for MVIB and this is data. So M, let us go to the list and at 162 serial number you can see that MVIB comma data whatsoever is your data. Its code is 6. Its decimal code is 6 and its hexadecimal code is also 6. So decimal code is of our interest because our 885 processor displays everything in decimal in memory. So 6 should be there and it is taking 2 bytes. 1 byte for the instruction MVIB and another byte for the data. So let us see it in our program. You can see that at location 4200, which I said that program should start from, we have an instruction 6. So this signifies that uh, there is a MVIB command and uh, the next location automatically becomes a data location because the processor will know that since MVIB is there, so the next location should be for data and here 10 is written. 10 is the decimal equivalent of 0 AH, so it is correctly verified. Similarly, <coughs> It, uh, let us, you know, it has taken two bytes here. Similarly, we can confirm it for move A comma B command. So let us go to the list again and at 99 location or serial number, you can see move A comma B command is there whose hexadecimal code is 78 and whose decimal code is 120. And it is taking only one byte in memory because there is no data. So move A comma B is taking one byte in memory and its instruction is uh, opcode in decimal is 120. So you can verify it, it is here again. Similarly, you can verify it for INRA. So INRA is placed at location 69 and its code is 60. So you can see that 60 is also here and HALT is a very popular code, the hexadecimal equivalent of which is 76 and its decimal equivalent is 118. So it is also shown there. So you can see it here also. So this is all about the program counter, how it is incremented and how our program is kept inside the memory. Now one of the problems with this 885 microprocessor is since we have only one memory which is 64 kilobytes as we have seen in our previous video tutorials. So this memory is shared between the program that is program is also written in the same memory and uh, the data that we want to keep is also in the same memory and in future videos we will see stack. So stack is also inside the same memory. So there are no segments in this memory single memory is used for everything. So if you write a very big code, then it might be possible that it might interfere with your stack or data that you have kept. But in practical situations, it is hardly so because for our purposes, we will be designing very small programs for the purposes of understanding only. So that's not a problem in this case. But as a fact, I have pointed it out that there is only single memory which is shared between everything. So thanks for watching our video tutorial and keep watching our channel for more updates on the topic.